I've worked with a lot of students that already know about the modes of the major scale, but they're having trouble figuring out why did they learn the modes of the major scale. What's the point and what are you supposed to do with these? So that's really what I want to tackle in this video. And I'm going to demonstrate to you each mode. What's the point of each mode? How does it feel? What does it do? And in my opinion, this is extremely important. It gives you freedom and it gives you options as a lead guitar player to really color the tone of what you're playing over. You're not just stuck to sounding bluesy with pentatonic minor or sounding happy with major. You really get some options here and some really cool options. Each one of these modes has its own unique identity and its own unique flair. And being able to access that whenever you want as a lead player or as a composer, I feel is invaluable. So with just a little bit of work with our modes, we should be able to kind of harness that energy and apply it where we need. In order to do that, though, we will need to have a little bit of theory under our belts. So in this video, I'm going to start off with a little light theory on how the modes are built. Then I'll demonstrate to you each mode one at a time so you can really get a grasp of how it feels and how to identify it. Then afterward, we'll talk a little bit of the heavier music theory that goes along with playing modes like we will be playing them in this video, okay? So to get started, we really want to know what are the modes of the major scale. And here's how I want you to think about it. There's a lot of ways to think about it. But essentially, I can make a major scale by following this sequence of half steps and whole steps. A half step is just one fret or one note, and a whole step is two frets or two notes. So I want to start on G, okay? I'll be playing in G everything today. I'll be in G major, G, Lydian, G everything. So I'm going to start on G, that's my root. And if I do uh, travel a whole step, another whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole step, a whole step, and a half step, it gives me my G major scale, also known as G Ionian. Now, if I want the second mode of the major scale, all I have to do is offset this pattern of half steps and whole steps by one. And by doing that, it will give me a whole different sequence of half steps and whole steps and a whole different sequence of notes. All right. To get the third mode of the major scale, all I would do is the same thing, just offset it by one, and I get a whole different sequence of notes. Keep going through this. You'll have all seven modes, and you'll notice they all start on G. Today I'm setting them all up on G so you can see the differences between them. Now if you pay close attention, you'll see that six of these modes contain the notes G and D. And the jam track I'll be playing over is just those two notes. It's just a G power chord, G and D, which means that I can play any of these modes over my jam track. However, I cannot play the Locrian mode over this jam track, and you probably see why. In my Locrian mode, I only have a D flat. I do not have a D note to play. Now, Locrian is its own beast, but there's a lot to talk about regarding Locrian because it's kind of the odd man out in this situation, all right? So now that we have all of the seven modes there, what's important to know is what is the tonic chord in each of these modes? What is the home base chord in each of these keys. And it might seem obvious, but you just kind of have to look in G major, for example, the first mode of the major scale, G Ionian. All we have to do to figure out the tonic chord is just look at the first note, the second note, I'm sorry, the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. By looking at one, three, and five, it'll tell you the notes of my tonic chord. That is G, B, D. And if I play G's, B's, and D's, it's a G major chord. So my tonic chord of G major is the G major chord. However, look at my second mode, all right, Dorian. You can see that if I look at the first note, the third note, and the fifth note, I actually get G, B flat, and D, which means the home chord of G Dorian would be a G minor chord, all right? That's important. As I'm going to be soloing and showing you these modes, I'm going to be outlining the tonic chord with my lead guitar. I'm not just going to be playing up and down the scale. I'm going to try to be I'm going to try to highlight the notes of the tonic chord to help really fill in the context of what key I'm in. Okay? And that's really important is knowing that each one of these modes has a home chord that you want to focus on. And as you can see, the home chord of uh, major, Lydian and Mixolydian is a major chord. The home chord of Dorian, Phrygian and minor is a minor chord. And once again, we have the odd man out. The tonic chord of Locrian is going to be a diminished triad. So you might be able to guess it's not going to be very harmonic if you're spending the whole time hanging out on a diminished triad, which kind of you might be getting the problem with Locrian already. But we'll talk about that later. Now that we have an idea of the theory behind how I'm building these things up, all starting them from the same root, all starting them on G, it's time to actually show you what these things sound like. So once again, my jam track is just playing G and D. That's a G power chord. And I want to go through each one of these scales. I'll go up the scale, and then I'll do a little bit of improvising so you can actually hear the tone and the color develop for each one of these modes. All right? Let's start off with major.
you might be able to hear, Major is very happy. It's very bright. It's almost sickeningly happy. Uh, I think of classical music. I think of health insurance commercials, anything that's supposed to make you feel, uh, you know, elated and overjoyed. Uh, Major, it gets kind of bland, and it takes some work to really sound interesting with Major if you're trying to avoid that really sweet saccharine sound. However, if you're looking for nice big melodies and really singable choruses, you're never going to go wrong with Major. But you've heard Major before, so let's go on to something a little bit more distinct, and that would be the Dorian scale. Let's take a listen to that one. So Dorian's kind of weird, right? It's not really evil and dark like a minor scale. It's kind of got this kind of smooth, silky, I always think of Carlos Santana. Uh, Carlos Santana's jams and songs, a lot of them are in Dorian. And they're minor because they're, you know, cool and dark. They're not overjoyed. But they've got a little bit of flair to it, a little bit of bite, a little bit of spice put into that minor. It's not just a dark and depressing and rocking minor. It's got a little bit more pep to it. So I have to point out that the real important note in Dorian is that natural sixth note. Normally in a minor scale, I have a flat six, but in Dorian, it's a natural six, and it gives it that major lift. It gives it that little brightness that we don't expect. And when I'm improvising in Dorian, I try to make it a point to, to get back to that note at just the right times to remind people, hey, I'm not in minor, I'm in Dorian, and it kind of brightens things up a little bit. So let's move on to Phrygian. <laughs> So that is pretty interesting. You can hear Phrygian's got a very exotic flavor to it, like a Middle Eastern, uh, foreign flavor to it. And that's really potent. My jam track used to be this bland, boring, two-note thing, but now the jam track itself actually feels dark and deep and kind of mysterious, right? And that's because the Phrygian mode has colored your ear. I've outlined the notes of that minor chord, the G minor chord, and I have this note, which is a flat two. I have an A flat in there, so these two notes right next to each other give you a really, really dark flavoring, right? So cool option for soloing over just one note or just a power chord is the Phrygian choice. And really the note you would want to be highlighting there is that flat two. So going back to something with a major tonality, let's take a look at the Lydian mode. This is my favorite mode. It's very dreamy, disoriented, disconnected, floaty. And that comes from the fact that we have a major triad, a G, a B, and a D. That's our tonic chord. But we also have a tritone, which is a sharp four or a diminished five. And just that combination of notes gives you a very sci-fi, kind of otherworldly feel. So anytime I'm trying to access that kind of emotion, I know that Lydian is a good place to start. Let's take a look at the next one with major tonality. That would be Mixolydian. I do love Mixolydian. It's like major, but it's kind of watered down. It doesn't have that sickening sweetness of major. Uh, it's much more palatable, and it's way more fun and rocking, and almost like an Irish flair to it. Uh, I found out just this week that the bagpipes are actually tuned to a natural Mixolydian scale. So it makes sense that it, you know, it reminds me of Irish music because I've heard it so much in traditional bagpipe music. So the Mixolydian scale is pretty much the same thing as a major scale. We've just flattened that seventh note, and that takes away the leading tone of major. 
right? And that was the leading tone right there. It really pulls us to our root. Now we have a flat seven, which gives us kind of a more, I don't know, uh, unexpected feeling, right? And it definitely dilutes the happiness of my major scale. So once again, a very cool option if you're stuck with just jamming over a power chord. If major sounding too bright and happy, just try bringing in that Mixolydian scale instead, and you'll get something with a little bit more upbeat attitude, and it's still bright and happy, but just not dripping with, with emotion, you know? All right, now let's take a look at the natural minor or Aeolian mode. So you've probably heard stuff like this before. This is the foundation of most of our rock and roll music. It's kind of traditional at this point. I can't really put my finger on it other than it's dark, but it's important to be able to contrast minor with Dorian. What's the difference between those two? Well, I think minor is darker. I think it's sadder. I think Dorian has a little bit more optimism to it. What's the difference between minor and Phrygian? Well, that should be obvious. Phrygian has a real distinct uh, exotic flair. That flat two is extremely dark, and it's, I think it's much darker uh, than, uh, than minor. So hopefully those kind of words, dark and light, I mean, I know they're not physical things, but they're the words that pop into my head when I try to compare something like Phrygian to minor. If my guitar player was jamming over a G power chord, and if I wanted to have an exotic flair, I know that Phrygian would be a better choice than minor. Now, lastly, let's talk about Locrian. Here's the problem. If I want to jam in Locrian, I'd need to be jamming on the home chord of Locrian, which would be G diminished. And hanging out on a diminished chord and pretending like that's going to be your home doesn't usually work out that well. Uh, it's You could do it as an academic thing, right? Just try to write something in Locrian, but without a root and a fifth. You know, a root and a fifth, those are like the two pillars of foundation for any chord. So now we're just left with this, a root and a flatted fifth. And this is not stable. So doing anything in Locrian is just going to give you something weird. And what's worse is it's not even that weird. There's better weird scales. If you're looking to sound atonal and chaotic, I think there's better choices than just Locrian. So to me, Locrian is like the remainder. It's the leftover stuff from all these awesome modes. Uh, you know, you got to have that leftover bad stuff. And to me, that's Locrian. That might not be fair to describe the Locrian mode that way, but I'll be completely honest with you. I haven't found any use for it other than to just goof around with it. And even then, like I said, if I want to sound goofy and chaotic, I would rather pick something like whole tone or an octatonic scale or some weird exotic scale like that. So I hope this gives you a little insight into why you might want to learn your modes. You can see, I mean, over one jam track, I'm able to sound six different ways. But having access to that means that when I'm composing or when I'm improvising, I have more than just a few choices. And I think that's really important as a musician. Also, it is worth talking about a few other concepts that kind of dovetail into what we did here. You might hear the word modal interchange or the word modal mixture. Essentially, that's what we were doing in this video. We had one tonic, we had G the entire time. And throughout this video, I was in G major, then I was in G Dorian and G Lydian and G Mixolydian. Often when you're writing chord changes that borrow from the different parallel modes, then you call that modal mixture or modal interchange. Some people might debate whether this is modal interchange because I didn't include any chords. There was just one, you know, power chord the entire time. But the scales I'm playing, I'm playing are implying different chord tones, which kind of creates that feeling of motor, modal mixture. Also, if you look at all the different modes I played, it contained all 12 different notes of the chromatic scale. And this can be thought of as polymodal chromaticism, accessing all 12 notes by changing parallel modes across one tonic. And this idea is very closely related to what you might hear as pitch axis theory, which is the idea of having a stable tonic, like G in our case, and using different chord tones uh, to kind of launch us into different modes. For example, if I had a G major chord with a sharp four 
well, I've got my G major triad and I have a sharp four, all of those notes are in G Lydian, so this would be kind of a launching board to play in the G Lydian key. Likewise, if I all of a sudden played a G minor seven chord, all of those notes are in G Dorian or in G minor. So I could use a G minor seven chord to kind of spring into that new mode. The whole idea of pitch axis theory though is that you are rotating on one tonic, just like in this video. So I really hope this clears some things up for you and maybe gives you some inspiration on your own lead writing and your own songwriting as to how to utilize this stuff. It's really important to learn music theory, in my opinion, but it's really important to be able to use it. This stuff isn't for factoids or for trivia. It's not something you, you know, recite, uh, you know, just for the sake of having the knowledge. It's ways of describing things that work. And as you can hear, all those things work. And music theory is just giving me a label to remember how it worked and how I can recreate it again. So I hope you learned something from this, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do like this video, please like, subscribe. You know what to do. And I will see you in the not-so-distant future.